Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we're back with uh, another video on public key cryptography. Uh, I think we looked at RSA, we looked at uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange method. Uh, one of, uh, also one of the crypto system which we used in public key cryptography is actually known as Al-Gamal crypto system. And this crypto system is actually based on discrete logarithmic problem. Uh, so we're gonna uh, uh, learn how to solve this algorithm. Uh, as you notice on my videos on cryptography, uh, I don't go, I mean, I just focus on how to actually do understanding of an algorithm at the same time how to basically solve them. So I'm just trying to cut all the jib jab out or chit chat out regarding a particular algorithm and things like that. Whatever I think is important for someone to know, I just focus on that on my video and which I try to do in my videos. So instead of going and understanding uh, let's just directly go into an example and try to solve it so here's the algorithm the algorithm uh, has two parts just like in rsa we have to generate a key and then we will encrypt our uh, encrypt the message and decrypt the message as per our requirement okay so here's the first thing uh, so it's based on discrete logarithmic problem we're not doing factorization just like we've been doing it in RSA because RSA security lies in factorization problem here. The security lies in discrete logarithmic problem, which is actually similar to the fee hellman key exchange method. All right. So the first, the key generation is we have to generate a large prime number and a generator. Okay. The first step is uh, we're going to choose a, a random prime number. Or we can choose a prime number or we can generate a prime number. So let's for the sake of simplicity. So let's do a key generation example. Okay. So for our key, we have to select a couple of parameters. First, we have to select a prime number. So let's select a prime number. Let's do our parameters over here. Let's say we have a prime number 13. And then next, we have to select a generator. So what is the generator? If you guys remember from my video on primitive root, how to compute uh, primitive roots, exactly the same thing. Just like we've been doing in Diffie-Hellman as well. We did it in Diffie-Hellman. So generator is just going to be a primitive root of that particular number, which in our case is 13, is a prime number. And uh, what is the definition of a generator or a primitive root? A number, what is the number that makes up an entire sequence of that number which means sorry which generates the entire number sequence from one to whatever the chosen modulus or prime number is so for example if our 13 is our prime number or 13 is the number that i have chosen the generator will be a number that will be able to generate this uh, numbers from all the way from one all the way up to 13 without I mean the order can be anything but it will be able to generate that number and after that we try to use another number to generate this i'll repeat it will repeat the same sequence again we uh, there's a video I'll, I'll 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 leave it in terms of a link okay then you need to select some random integer that random integer is going to be from 1 to p minus 2 so our condition is 1 from 1 to p minus 2 is 13 minus 2 which is 11 so i can choose a number which is 8 so I've, instead of me calculating the generator, uh, the generator for 13, there are many generators which are there. The primitive roof of 13, one of them is 2, just to make our life easier. Uh, you can also watch a video on this, how to generate primitive roots, or you can just simply Google it, and I, I made a video on it. So then the next thing is I need to select a random integer. All right. So the random integer that I'm selecting, let's say I'm selecting a random integer to be 4. And this has to be from 1 to p minus 2, which is 11. All right. So that is p. And so now the a is public parameter. The public key that a Alice is going to share is going to be. So the public key for Alice will be p alpha alpha to the a. This is these are going to be the public parameters. So let's write them in terms of uh, in terms of uh, these digits that I have selected. So P is going to be 13, alpha is going to be 2, and alpha to the A is just going to be the solution of this. So this is just not going to be 2 to the 4. It's just going to be a solution for this. So 2 raised to 4 mod 13, whatever the answer that I will get, that would be in place of alpha A. All right, so far so good, in which this alpha 
this a value is actually going to be the private key so this is going to be private key for Alice which is the value of a in our case this a is actually 4 all right so far so good so that's the key generation part all right so let me rewrite the key again so this is going to be what this key so these are the uh, that's where the discrete logarithmic problem will come in why because in order for me to find out i have to take a log of that the bigger this number is going to be the alpha value is going to be it's hard for me to find the anti-log of that to come up with uh, the the this value of a so a is going to be an actual um, value which is going to be your private key alice's private key so your public key is going to be your public key let me rewrite this this is going to be 13 2 alpha to the a mod 20 uh, 13 alpha to the a mod 13 so we're not actually sending a we're actually giving them the solution of alpha a raised to mod 23 so i'm going to bring my calculator in so this is going to be alpha is 2 raised to 4 mod 13 shift so this is actually going to be 3 this is going to be your uh, these are the par public parameters that you will share all right now here comes the encryption part of this algorithm so uh, we're going to do encryption here and decryption over there all right so obtains a's authentic public key so we're going to use A's public key to encrypt our message. And so the first step, so we're going to get this key. This is the key which is going to be shared on internet uh, or whatever, however. And then after that, you're going to take that key and then you're going to encrypt a message. So before you encrypt the message, uh, Bob, he will select a random integer. Let's just call that K. The value of K is from 1 to P minus 2. The value of k is going to be 1 to p minus 2. So let's select a value to be uh, some random value to be 6. All right. So our value k is going to be 6. And after selecting 6, then it's going to compute two values. So after computing this, so this is the value that it will select. Select. Selected by Bob or your receiver. Or your receiver all right so I'm just going to compute two parameters the first after that it will compute two parameters it will compute your uh, uh, gamma which is going to be alpha raised to K mod P this is the first value it will compute so let's compute this value and the second value it will compute is actually going to be this value which is going to be your Delta value so this is the first this is the first value it will compute this will be the second value it will compute which is going to be your delta that is going to be your message times alpha raised to a k mod p these are the two values in order for me to encrypt the message so let's say our message is 5 all right so let's say let's our message is 5 okay so let's try to calculate this value let's calculate this uh, gamma value first so our alpha I know which is being shared through our public parameter which is 2 K is something that it, Bob has selected which is going to be 6 P is something that I already know which is being shared which is 13 so we're just gonna simply solve this so I'm gonna use my calculator I've already told you how to do it so 2 raised to 6 mod 13 so that should give me 12. So your delta value turns out to be 12. So now let's solve this. Our message is 5. Alpha A, I already know what that is because I have a solution for this, which is 3. I have already calculated this. So alpha A is actually 2 raised to 4 mod P. So I'm just going to simply write this value, which is being shared which is actually part of our, our public parameter. K, I already know what is this. This is 6 mod 
13. All right, so far so good. So now let's calculate this gamma uh, delta value. So let's calculate this delta value. So this is going to be three raised to six. You can do it separately uh, because the mod can be, uh, so mod can be used with this only and then mod can also be used with this. So I'm using this property, 13, shift, so this is this whole thing, 3 raised to 6 mod 13 turns out to be 1 times 5, that is the message part, mod 13. Alright, so far so, so good. So 5 times 1 is 5, mod 13, so if the modulus is bigger and the number is smaller, I'll get this back. So my encrypted text, the cipher text for a message having 5 is actually consist of C is equals to your gamma value comma your delta delta value and these two value turns out to be what 12 comma 5 this is my cipher text which represent 5 all right it's coincidentally coincidentally that that my gamma value turns out to be 5 it's not supposed to turns out to be five because you might be thinking, okay, this is this is the message that I've used and this is what it turns out to be. The reason it turns out to be this, because my values are very small, all right? Because the way we are selecting our integers, like for example, A and the reason uh, and K, if you were to look at it, we hardly have any numbers to select from because the value of A is from one to th 11. Because my prime was 13, I selected prime to be 13. So that is hardly any number. I mean, there are hardly any values in between. That's why it turns out to be this. But the process is exactly the same if you select very large integer value or spe specifically large prime numbers. All right, so once I've done that, so let's try to decrypt this. I hope you're understanding what I just said. Coincidentally, my delta value turns out to be 5, which is actually representing my message. But if the value, because I have a very small number of space to work with. Why? Because it's actually from 1 all the way up to P minus 2. So you got to know, you got to understand this. Uh, that's why. Otherwise, if the value is bigger, I have a bigger, bigger numbers to work with. Bigger number uh, space to work with. All right. So let's try to decrypt this message. In order for me to decrypt this, I'm going to use this definition. Gamma raised to P minus 1 minus A mod p that's it once i know this multiply that by delta value mod p this is the definition so this is the definition i'm going to use so in order for me to decrypt this i'll take my uh, gamma gamma value raise it to negative a multiply this value by my delta mod p all right what does this mean that just simply means uh, uh gamma raised to that just simply means gamma raised to p minus 1 minus a mod p right that just simply means this times delta mod p this is what it means all right so i already know what my 12 uh, my my gamma value is gamma is 12 my prime is 13 13 minus 1 is 12 12 minus a I know what that is this is at the receiver side so Alice is performing the decryption part so Alice is know her private key which is 4 so 13 minus 1 is 12 12 minus 4 is 8 so 12 raised to 8 dotted multiply by 5 which is going to be my delta value mod 13. I hope you guys are seeing this. Okay, so now it's just all about calculating it. So uh, 12 raised to 8, I think, is going to be a huge number, but we're going to try it anyhow. Uh, 12 raised to 8 is going to be a huge number. I know that. Mod 13, yes, is a very huge number. So let's break this 12 8, 12 8 down 12 4. 12 raised to 4. So 12 raised to 4. Oh, sorry. 12 raised to 4, 4, mod 13, 
shift sd so when i break this down into this so i'm just going to carry these calculation over here so i can break this down like this so this is part of this so this is the decryption process that i'm carrying on so i can break this down into because when the bases are same i can just add the powers times 5 mod 13 because i already know what that is we just calculated 12 raised to 4 mod 13 is actually 1 so i can replace this and this with 1 times 5 mod 13 and you can clearly see what is going to be our uh, answer which is going to be my message actually so 5 times 1 times 1 is 1 1 times 5 is 5 5 mod 3 is 5 so this is going to be your message all right so far so good and this is how you perform al gamal encryption system uh crypto system actually so, uh, so this algorithm this so this is how you do actually al gamal crypto system uh, uh the few key points that you need to remember uh so the ciphertext tends to get quite larger that's why we don't use them rsa is still a dominant algorithm because we were getting one ciphertext for each message now we're getting two two different parameters for ciphertext even though we're using a smaller numbers coincidentally because our number space was was very small that's why we were getting the delta value to be five otherwise it's not a coincidence it's just a coincidence it turns out to be five why because the the the, the number are very small the selection of the numbers that i have chosen is very small if the numbers are larger then these value will differ so the process that you need to go through to solve algamal crypto system examples or problems is exactly the same thing so uh, so i hope you like this small tutorial on algamal crypto system uh, if you have any questions please leave it in a comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel